And one of the reasons I left the US is because I was disappointed. Coming back into this negative sphere, but right. seeing the good, I can finally say the things that have actually really been bothering me. China was testing my limits, getting harassed all the time. Just doing something like this. You just don't have anything to compare it with, yeah. so you take it for granted. They want to speak, they're censoring themselves because right. they know there's trouble. That's the worst, right? Yeah, but if you step out of line, if you speak against the government, you're done. You and your family are done. It's not even a communist country. They don't have any social programs. What would you tell like the average person who's getting this pessimistic view of, of the U.S. All right. Here I am with Matt Tai yeah. of Lao Y86. He's What's got up, a fantastic YouTube channel about all things Chinese. And today I thought it'd be a great idea to get in a conversation with him. We're here in Carlsbad near San Diego. We met up here. Both live in different cities, but yep. we had to meet up in a nice place we did, here. We did. And I wanted to talk to Matt about his take on the U.S. after living abroad for what, 10 years? Yeah, 10 years. 10, 10 years, years in China, yeah, Taiwan. I lived abroad, I just got back from four years abroad, but 10 years is a serious stint. And he was in deep, for those that don't know his channel, uh, he was in deep in China, speaks fluent Chinese, and I think has done one of the deepest dives I've seen online, <laughs> all things China related. Sure. And. How's it feel? I'm just gonna start with that. Man, how's um, it feel being back? Been back, what, two years now? Yeah, okay. so I'll be honest with you, I was dreading it. I mean, one of the reasons I left the US is because I was disappointed. And that's that's the truth of the, the whole thing, is that when I left in 2008, I was I was over this place. You know, right. I, I traveled around, I had been, I had uh, I was in debt from college. Yeah. And I was like, is this all there is? Is you live the white picket fence dream, you know? Right. You pay off the, your college debt for the rest of your life. Um, and that's pretty much where I was at. So I was, I was thinking about what can I do outside of this? I just backed back through Europe, right. wanted more of that. So I ended up trying to move to Taiwan, ended up in China. But um, when I got back here, it was a completely different story. When I got back here, I saw everything, not from a 21, 22 year old's eyes anymore. Right. It was a realistic, it was sobering. It was a realistic perspective that not that, not that I did. I, I had it so good before, and now I see like what I was missing. Right. It's more like, from an outside perspective, when you live away from this country for so long, you can see the general, the general nature of America is what you make of it. Instead of, oh, this yeah. is what I'm supposed to do. This is what mom and dad did. Right. I can come back here <clears throat> with a new, renewed perspective from being abroad for so long and say, listen, I can do so much here, and America affords me so many opportunities. Right. It's a massive benefit of the country, whereas I was, China was testing my limits of what I could do, what I could get away with, right? I was going around shooting these documentaries and SWAT team, PLA, police at every corner, getting harassed all the time. Being, just having to just doing them. something like this. Just doing something like this, right? Yeah. Just going around like I was up filming camels up in Inner Mongolia and next thing you know it, I'm uh, being interrogated by the, the SWAT team in the People's Liberation Army, right? Okay. It's. It's those sobering moments when you realize, holy shit. Right. Like the fact that I can't just go have, I, and I'm already tiptoeing around my subject matter in China, right? Right. I, I'm only covering positive things because yep. I know what'll happen to me otherwise. Right. So when you come back here and you realize you can do all of those things, it wakes you up. It wakes you up like, wow. Number two, my neighborhood in upstate New York is not America. Everywhere, every single place in America is completely different. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. if point. I wanted to integrate and, and talk to people of different cultures and stuff, that's all here. Right. That's everywhere. Right. It's so much more multicultural than China is, right? But my perspective as someone who left uh, back in 2008 was that it's just my hometown. Right. And you can travel around and stuff, but unless you live in a place, you won't fully understand it. Traveling is different. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Living in, and it's, it's almost like a relationship when you're dating. Right. Like everything's great in the beginning. Right. Like the, the, the part, the person can do no wrong. Right. And then time starts, you know, revealing the truth of it. Right. And it, is it a good fit or not? Yes. That's exactly what it is. You want to get going to the beach? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Oh, cool. All right. So, we'll go to the beach. I mean, I, I've been watching Peter's stuff for a long time now. And um, I'll be honest with you, our perspective on things is probably quite similar, but the way that we portray things is a little different. Yeah, But yeah. I think that's sure. very necessary. Sure. Because I, I like to watch your stuff because you are a bastion of positivity in a very negative world, right? I'm trying, I'm it's trying. Well, you are. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps my sanity sure. to some and degree. I, I think that's fantastic, right? 
one thing that differs I would say is that when I was, was when I was in China for 10 years I loved it I loved every minute of it and I thought it was fascinating it pushed me to my limits but right. it also made me who I am today right and I have to thank China for that experience that being said because of those experiences, because it pushed me to the limits of what I could do, coming back here has been like a burden has been lifted because I can finally say the things that have actually really been bothering me. And I'm not talking about dirty right. toilets or something. Right. I'm talking about like the real, real bad stuff that was going on uh, due to the Communist Party of China. And yes, my channel's taken a focus on that just because I think it's so necessary to talk about. Yeah, yeah. And so there's always that, like you were saying earlier, traveling's one thing, living is another. Yeah, yeah. And, Ukraine and China are two different worlds. Sure. I, lived, I lived in, in Kiev, Ukraine, yep. and uh, I was free to speak whatever. And it's actually a very freeing place. Sure, sure. I'd say there are even less rules in the States. For sure. In For many sure. ways, right? In many ways, yeah. Um, my challenges there were different. Overall, I loved the culture. I loved the people. Sure. Um, the government did not interfere with me. Right. Uh, it was things like air pollution. Yeah. You know, like breathing yeah. clean air. I was getting headaches. Right. Or things just, just not working. Or some oligarch... Can, you know, this is a new complex here. Yeah. And someone can put up another one here, pay off the right guy. All of a sudden the water's not working so well over there. I get you. Those types of stories yeah. that sort of add up. They, they sure. add up and then you realize when you, when you grow up in the state, you, you just don't have anything to compare it with. Yeah. So you take it for granted. Yes. But until you lose those things. Yes. Yes. And they start to make your life more difficult. Then you're like, oh my God, this is, this is an amazing yes. thing. Yes. Right. Yes. And I want to say also that, like, um, in these times we're in, where it's a very negative, sort of uh, bitter look at the U.S. Sure. online, especially, yeah, right? Yeah. And we have all sorts of challenges and problems. I mean, these are very evident. Right. A lot of the good is getting overlooked. Yes, absolutely. And that's the thing that's so frustrating is that coming back into this negative sphere, but right. seeing the good seeing what's so amazing about it right is exactly what's in it's it's infuriating i'll be a totally honest <laughs> yeah. but it's also my my job and your job as well not to convince people that the u.s is a good place right but to show the reasons maybe as to why right and maybe inspire some people to take advantage of their situation yes um yes we all are considered privileged maybe in this country right mm -hmm. uh compared to to other groups of people especially that's the current dialogue right now right that being said, despite all of those things, people keep saying, well, this shows America's weakness. This shows how America is going to fall. It's like the empire. It's like the Roman right. Empire. These, right, are, right. these are all the signs, the telltale signs of a fallen empire. To me, all of this turmoil, uh -huh. number one, doesn't compare to China, the stuff I've seen in China that okay. people aren't allowed to talk about. Right. But number two, shows the strength to me of this country. The fact that people can be so divided and at each other's throats, seemingly, right. you know, on the media, but it's still a cohesive country that continues to work yeah. and operate. And people can still do what they want to do and address those issues. To me, that's a beautiful thing. And I, you know, sometimes we all do it, right? We get on the, the rabbit hole of the yeah. internet, right? And you go down and you're like, oh, it's looking really bad out there. And then I'm driving around the streets and I'm like, yeah. okay, I'm, we're in California. We're seeing homeless people. Like that's, sure. that's like, they're here. There yeah. are big problems. Yeah. But, look at this look at this life like is anyone coming at our throats no. I'm talking with people from all different backgrounds every right. day yeah. I don't feel any tension in that nope. but if you're if you're constantly poking through the online world it's like wow it's coming down really quickly right COVID hasn't helped us no. everyone's like inside on, on the virtual world yeah and so what I'm doing I think what you're doing is capturing the real world and in, in putting into the virtual world. Yes. Obviously, it's coming through our lenses. Like, there's always For a sure. bias, right? For there's sure. always, I'm trying to look at things as an optimist. Uh, sometimes I'll get into the dirt. Sure. Like, I made a video recently about San Francisco. Sure. I was just pissed off on how bad I it's got gotten. You. I think so, it's, it's great that you do that, I, though. I felt you like can. I had to, but. You can do that. That's the difference. Right, right, right. Right, so there's no perfect place. I like, I like to always make that very clear to my audience and whomever's watching these videos. Like, there's no perfect place. No. I feel like. The U.S. is a wonderful place if you want to, if you really want to realize yourself. Sure. If you want to experiment, if you want to not be mm -hmm. judged. Yeah. For what you're doing. Oh, they would tell you otherwise, though, wouldn't they? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> like I'm in my 40s making YouTube videos. Yeah. That is not cool in uh, most of the world, and maybe not to some of you <laughs> out there. But uh, no, it's it, it works, right? And yeah. you can you can recreate and you can reinvent. You can try different things. You can do you can do some real estate and make YouTube videos yeah. at the same. There's so many options yeah. and the culture, which I want to 
mention is very important and you cannot read really about this or see it as a tourist, no. but what's expected in a culture and how restrictive that can be. Right. So for example, I don't want to totally, you know, nail it Italy. I love Italy. Sure. But there are many, it, there's more, there's more like rigidity to yeah. what you need to be to so-called be successful in life. Right. 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 Yeah. Like you need to take the, like t an Italian mom telling you you're doing a YouTube channel probably isn't going to go over well with most, no. most Italian moms. No. Right. And the interesting thing too, is a lot of Americans and my, myself included before, I always thought Europe was like, uh, they have it so much better in Europe. Sure. Right. I was like, oh, sure. Europe, they, look at, they got the, the piazzas, they got the I, cafes. I exactly the same. It's like, look at that perfect life. They have the lifestyle. Right. And if you do want a three hour lunch break, yeah. Italy is way better than here. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'll admit. That gets, that's got to get old after a while. Right? For me, for yeah. my personality or your personality that, sure. or anyone that's like really driven, I think right. that gets old. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And also a lot of people don't know a good salary in Italy is two grand a month. Right. Right. That's like a good salary. Right. People are like, wow, that person makes two grand a month. Sure. And I think I made that when I was mowing lawns as a oh, yeah. 16 year old. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that yeah. in the summers. Yeah. Right. So there's a lot of, I'm not going to say mis misinformation, but that grass is always greener mentality. Right. And I suggest to anyone to go experience the world and live in the world. Sure. Like sure. you and I both did. And yeah. then you make your own decisions. Right. Right. But what I wanted to ask you is, we're in these times now, I mean, especially the last year, uh -huh. it's been a shock for me coming back into it. Sort of this censorship mentality, sure. like stick with the narrative mentality, scared to speak mentality. Sure. China's taken that course, right? Yeah. Would you say over the last oh, yeah. five years or so? Yeah. Do you feel like America is following in that sense at all or is totally different? I think it's wildly different, but that is something that everyone asks me because they see, they, they basically say, listen, Matt, I feel like what you're saying about the Chinese government currently in your videos is exactly what's happening right, right now here in the US. And I gotta say it's very different because can, like cancel culture, for example. Right. The Chinese government uses cancel culture at a state level, right? So if you step out of line, if you speak against the government, you're done, you and your family are done. It's a thuggish regime, right? Cancel culture here is driven by uh, this obsession with social media, okay. this obsession with being famous, it's the obsession with having power over another human being. But I don't right. think that's entered the political sphere as much as you might think. Okay. I think down, if you really took it as like a legal case, for example, if you use defamation and things like that, it's actually really hard to sue someone for something dumb here, right? Like mm. defamation and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that kind of ties into the whole cancel culture thing. However, I do see culturally, a censorship taking over, I see people buying into that and just accepting it okay. based on what it's going to do to their image online Okay. or maybe at work, right? Now the reason I say it's so different again is that it's a state level versus a private level. It's social pressure versus a, an actual government that will uh, f*** you up. Right, right, right. right. So that's, that's the biggest difference here and I don't want, to I don't want people to equivalent, I don't want people to equate those two things together. Gotcha. You're not living in an authoritarian police state in the US. And I'm, that's one thing I'm just so tired of is that, oh, it looks like we're just becoming exactly like Dr. Seuss being canceled or whatever, right? Okay. That was, that was Amazon and the publisher. Right. right. Canceling. Well, the, the publisher, not the, government. Did, right? not the government, right? But yeah. in China, it's the government canceling those things. Okay. Not just books, but anything, any sentiment, any mild distaste for the government, right? So, you, as an American, if, if I'm speaking to Americans mostly, yeah. um, you still have the right to do most things, right? That hasn't right. been taken away from you yet. Right. Whether you decide to feed into that toxic mentality of social media and the way things are going currently, uh -huh. it's something I refuse to do. But if you're feeding into that, then you're part of the problem as well, right? But it's, a, it's an honest choice. It's an honest choice. But if you're at a workspace maybe, or a corporate America, and like there's sort of protocols you have to- That sucks, that sucks. That, that sucks. That sucks. Yeah. I have friends in those situations. And I understand that. And that's, yeah. that's, a, real, that's a real thing. Um, when you talk about that, but again, it's not the state leaning down on people for that, right? Yeah. Now, if you're talking about how far corporate America has gone and the influence that it, it controls the workplace or the way people act in general, yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a massive issue, but it's also a separate issue, right? Yeah. It's something that I feel like people need to take, take up on their own and, and gather together and come to the consensus that, hey, maybe we should hold on to our freedoms, right? Yeah. And not let a dollar or Amazon tell us what to do. Right. So yeah, I mean, it's different and I guess it's a little similar. It's a little similar, but mostly different. 
But for me, I realize how important that is after being in many parts. I've been in countries where people, you're, you're in a great conversation, it goes political, and all of a sudden there's like this tent, they like yeah. clench jaws, like yeah. they want to speak, but they just, they're, they're censoring themselves because right. they know there's trouble from the government. And right. that's like, that's the worst, right? Yeah. That's like the biggest breach of sovereignty, yes. you know, that a human can experience, I think, is when you cannot speak. Yeah, I think there's this fallacy, actually. It's a massive one. I think there's this fallacy that, like, a lot of people would be like, listen, you just got in trouble in China because you were speaking out. Number one, I wasn't, right? I was really actually just towing the party line at that right, point. Right, right. But the fact that I would bring up anything societally was enough to the, throw the, for them to throw the book at me, right? So there was, you know, the average person might say, listen, if you just don't talk about politics, then you're fine, right? right. And that's missing the point, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, maybe if you go to a country where it's illegal to talk about politics, you probably shouldn't talk about politics, right? That being said, that's not that's that's a slippery slope. That's not the way a society should run, right? Nothing should right. be off limits for a private conversation. That's right. just ridiculous, right? And that's not an American exceptionalism or privilege or whatever. But it, coming back to America, you can see how good people actually have the luxuries of being able to say what they want to say. What would you tell young people that feel they don't, like, like some people legit, legitimately have it bad. I've been to sure. their hoods. Yeah, absolutely. Like, they're growing up in difficult conditions. They're people in very difficult circumstances. But overall, I'd say we're a country of, what, 330 million people? Yeah. What would you tell, like, the average young person who's getting this pessimistic view of, of the U.S. and its place in the world, or however you want to take that? I'd tell them I had to walk snow uphill both ways you know <laughs> obviously people are gonna look at a 34 year old and be like okay boomer but yeah 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 i don't look at it from the perspective of our ages look at it from the perspective of we've already seen the world right yeah it's not a flex that's a real thing when you see outside pers when you have an outside perspective and you live amongst a, a situation that's wildly different from yours back home you can see how things work and i'm not going to tell a kid in the hood that he has it good i'm not going to be like damn you are so, you're, you're on the right trajectory, everything's gonna be awesome. Right, right, right. The state probably isn't gonna take care of you by and large, right? That's just, that's the nature of the beast, right? However, the opportunities outside of your impoverished situation, maybe your family situation and stuff, remain better than the majority of the rest of the world, right? And I understand it sucks to have somebody say like, listen, you just gotta pull through and get out of it. Right, right. That's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is that you do have a toolbox here outside of your personal situation to make a change. You yeah. do. And that's something that people in other countries, in particular in my case, in China, you know that people always talk about, oh, Chinese people have it so good because they love their government and it's, they're taking care of them. Number one, their government's not taking care of them. And they're it's 95%. Not. No, it's, it's not a socialist it's, country. It's communist. It's a, so I people mean, it's, think... It's not even a communist country. They don't have any social programs. Let's, so, let's jump over here. Sure. Let's just uh, get away poor, from this crane. If you're poor in China, you die. There's not, there's not food banks here. There's not a YMCA, you understand? There's not a government program that's handing out stipend left and right to poor people. Right. It's cutthroat as hell. It's more cutthroat than the US, right? So what I'm saying is that the so-called approval rating of people in China that approve of their government's like, authoritarian lead is 95%. That's bullshit. You can't say you don't approve of the government and it's 95% apathy from what I've seen. It's because yeah. you can't do anything about it, right? Gotcha. So yeah. when you talk about an American, down and out American that has a really bad luck, like lot in life. Yeah. You still have the toolbox in the US to make something of yourself. Yeah. You still have it. You still have free education. Maybe yeah. it sucks, but you're still better than most of the rest of the world. And that comparison may not be useful to you right now, but it's one of those things that became useful to me after I left. Right, 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 right. So I didn't have like some awful childhood, right? I grew up very middle class. Yeah. But even that, leaving that, and then coming back, I was like, what an idiot I was to not take all these opportunities and advantages that I had. Yeah, at me. yeah, yeah. Right? What, you just don't know until you see some, until you see it from a different perspective. Correct. You just don't know. You don't know what dress feels, shoes feel like until you, you know, you get into running shoes and then you correct. go back to your dress shoes. That's exactly correct. So, all right, we could go on forever. Yeah, yeah. We have a lot of China themes, but sure. I'm going to direct you guys to Matt's channel because he goes in deep. He presents them very well. It's one of my favorite channels on YouTube. Thank you. I'll leave the link below. All right, hopefully we uh, brought some spirits up today. But if you are questioning the US, it's always good to question everything. Uh, and if you have a chance, go out and get some world experience. Yes. Maybe you like it more out there. Maybe you stay and that's great. Or maybe you look at here in your own life in a different way. 
I did it in my 20s, best move I ever made. Yeah, agreed. All right, thanks Matt. No problem.